Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and the ages of ages. Amen. All holy trinity have mercy on us. The Lord cleanses us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, this and the Lord, for peace for the name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and the ages of age. Amen. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance, granting to thy people victory over all their enemies, and by the power of thy cross, preserving thy commonwealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Do thou, who with thine own good will was lifted up upon the cross, O Christ our God, be still thy bounties upon the new nation, which is called by thy name. Make glad in those in might those who lawfully govern, that with them we, we may be led to victory over our adversaries, having in thine aid a weapon of peace and a trophy invincible, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O champion, dread cannot be put to confusion. Despise not our petitions. O good and all praise, they to us. Establish the way of the Lord God. Save those who have been called upon to govern us, leading us to that victory which is from heaven. For thou art she who gave us birth to God, and alone art blessed. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, who this each to hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And was as a speechless man that opened not his mouth. 
and I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in me have I hoped, O Lord. Thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let never my enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrows continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, and I will take heed concerning my sin. But my enemies live and are made stronger than I. And they that hated me unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good slander me, because I pursue goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord, of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord, of my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and unwatered. So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives. My lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life. And in thy name I will lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness let my soul be filled. And with lips rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remember thee on my bed, at the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, and the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these, in vain have they sought after my soul. They shall go into the nethermost parts of the earth, they shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword. Portions of poor foxes shall they be, but the king shall be glad in God, everyone shall be praised and sweareth by him. For the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper. In the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee. Thy right hand has been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down my ear unto my supplication. For filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath drawn nigh. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They laid me in the lowest pit in darkness, and in the shadow of death against me is thine anger made strong, and all thy billows hast thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me, they have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up, and have not come forth. Mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead will thou work wonders, or shall physicians raise them up, that they may give thanks unto thee. Nay, shall any in the grave tell of thy mercy, and of thy truth, and thy destruction. Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness, and thy righteousness in that land that is forgotten. But as for me, unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul, and turnest thy face away from me? A poor man am I, and troubles from my youth. Yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came round about me like water all the day long. They compassed me about together. Thou hast removed the far from me, friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Bow down thine ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all that he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things. Thy youth shall be renewed as the evils. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executes judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long suffering and plenteous in mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered, neither unto eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities hath he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord hath made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his son, so hath the Lord hath compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth wherever we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are as the grass, as the flower of the field. 
So shall he blossom forth, for when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone, and no longer will it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament, and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers, that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear unto my supplication, in thy truth hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified, for the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath humbled my life down to the earth, he hath sat me in darkness as those that have been long dead. And my spirit within me has become despondent, within me my heart is troubled. I remember days of old, I meditated on all thy works, I pondered on the creations of thy hands. I stretched forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee. Like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction, and in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy mine enemies, and thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. O Lord, give ear unto my supplication, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. O oh Lord, our hope will be to thee in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all men, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God is the 
the Lord, and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Thee and glorify thee. 
Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of the angels was amazed when they beheld thee numbered among the dead. Yet thyself, O Savior, destroyed the power of death, and with thee raising up Adam, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Wherefore, O women disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity? The radiant angel within the sepulchre cried unto the murmuring women, Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Very early in the morning did the murmuring women run lamenting unto thy tomb, but an angel came to warn them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. They drew near thy tomb, O Savior, but the angels spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead, in that he is God, he is risen from the grave? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. 
Verily by the Holy Spirit every divine one seeth and uttereth things to be, and performeth heavenly wonders. For he singeth to one God in three, for the Godhead, albeit of three lights, is one in leadership. To thee have I cried, O Lord, listen and turn thine ear towards me when I shall purify me before thou raisest me from this place. Verily, everyone shall return and disappear in his mother of the earth, and shall be dissolved at once to receive either honors or punishments as reward for what he hath done in his lifetime. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, through the Holy Spirit, one speaketh of the one of the Godhead, the one, the thrice holy, for from the Father who is without beginning, the Son to proceed without time. And the Spirit, who is their equal in appearance and on the throne, hath shown forth from the Father likewise. Behold how good and how beautiful for brethren to live together, for of this did the Lord promise eternal life. Verily he who beautified the flowers of the field commanded that no one take heed for his dress. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, the Holy Spirit is the cause of all, and containeth in himself the harmony of safety, for he is truly equal to the Father and the Son in substance. The Lord shall reign forever, thy God of Zion, from generation to generation. The
And that we have beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us bow down before the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one, thy cross to be the of Christ, and thy holy resurrection, we praise and glorify. For thou art our God, and we know none other beside thee. We call upon the name, O come on and faithful, let us adore Christ's holy resurrection. For lo, through the cross is joy coming to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us sing his resurrection. For in that he endured the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my iniquity, my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with this, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones of be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a bright spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I have given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humble, God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure on Zion. Let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and hope and offerings. Then shall they offer bullets upon thy altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I tremble 
for the terrible day of judgment. But trusting the compassion of thy mercy, I shout to thee like Savior 
thou didst rouse the dead, thou didst raise Adam while he danceth in the new joy of thy blessed resurrection, O Lord. And the world's farthest regions keep the festival of thine rising from the dead with gladness and thanksgiving, O thou who art greatly merciful. When thou hast despoiled the dominion of Hades and hast raised the dead, O long suffering one, thou didst meet the more buried women bringing them joy instead of sorrow, and unto thine apostles thou mayst know the symbols of victory, O my Savior, giver of life. Thou hast enlightened creation, O lover of mankind. Wherefore the world rejoices at thy rising from the dead, O thou who art greatly merciful. On March 29th in the Holy Orthodox Church we commemorate the martyr, the mark, Bishop of Arutha, Martyr Cyril, the deacon of Coopolis, and those with him. Martyrs Jonah and Barakikos of Persia and those with them, and Euthathios, the confessor bishop of Lithia. On this same day, the fourth Sunday of Great Lent, we make remembrance of our godly father John, the author of the letter of divine descent, or Clementus. John, dead in the flesh and also living, lived eternally, even though appearing dead and without breath. Leaving letters, the ladder for the journey upwards. He showed forth his spirit pursuit of the journey upwards. The celebration of this feast on this day arose from the custom prevalent in the honorable monasteries of starting Lent with the reading of his lessons. John describes the method of elevating the soul to God as ascending a ladder. He teaches those who seek salvation how to lay a firm foundation for struggles, how to detect and fight every passion how to avoid demonic snares, and how to rise from the rudimental virtues to the heights of godlike love and humility. John of the Latter came to Mount Sinai at age 16 and remained there, first as a novice under obedience, then as a recluse, and finally as abbot until his 80th year. One time his disciple Moses fell asleep under the shade of a large stone. John, in prayer in his cell, saw that his disciple was in danger and prayed to God for him. Later, when Moses returned, he fell on his knees and gave thanks to his spiritual father for saving him from certain death. He related how, in a dream, he had heard John calling him, and he jumped up. And at that moment, the stone tumbled. Had he not jumped, the stone would have crushed him. John Climacus died on March 30th, 606. Through his intersections, O Christ God, have mercy upon us. Amen. I shall open my mouth and it will be filled with the Spirit. I shall speak forth to the Queen and Mother. I shall be seen joyfully singing in her praises. And I shall delight to sing of her wonders. As a living and copious fountain of Theotokos, do thou strengthen those who hymn thy praises and are joined together in spiritual company for thy service. And in thy divine glory, make them worthy of crowns of glory. He who sits in clouds of glory upon the throne of Godhead, Jesus the Most High God, came with his mighty hand and saved those who cried out unto him, Glory to thy power, O Christ. All creation was amazed at thy divine glory. For thou, O wedded virgin, didst hold in thee the God of all, and didst bear the eternal Son, who rewards with salvation all those who hymn thy praises. As we, the godly minded, celebrate the sacred and honorable feast of the Mother of God, come, let us clap our hands together and glorify the God whom she bore. The godly minded children worship not the Creator creature rather than the creator but trampling upon the thread of fire in manly fashion they rejoiced and sang O oh, praise lord and god of our fathers blessed art thou we praise bless and we worship the lord All your works praise the Lord and magnify him unto all ages. <clears throat> the fair focus and mother of the light, let us honor and magnify your soul. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoice. 
But when she heard him call her name, then she verily knew him that it was he. And her touch me not spoken by the Savior, for to my father I depart, go thou and tell my brethren. O righteous John of perpetual memory, thou didst turn aside from worldly luxury, because it is loathsome. And emaciating thy body with abstinence, thou didst renew the power of thy soul, and enriched it with heavenly glory. Wherefore thou ceasest not to intercede for our sakes, save through thee, O Lady, we acknowledge thee to be in truth the Theotokos, for in ways past speech thou hast borne God who has destroyed death by the cross, and called to himself the assemblies of the saints. With them we praise thee, O Oh, 
forth. Through this, O man most wise, thou becamest blessed and didst utterly overturn the counsels of all base and godless men. Praise him upon the loud symbols, praise him upon the high sounding symbols, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Righteous Father John, in very truth thou hast a high praise of God in thy throat every day and hour, and with active diligence thou didst earnestly meditate on the divinely inspired oracles, and was made rich in the grace that they pour forth through this, O man most wise, thou becamest blessed, and didst utterly overturn the counsels of all base and godless men. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, and his commandments shall he gratefully delight. Righteous Father John, most glorious, with streaming fountains of tears, thou didst wash thy soul clean of stain. Standing all the night in prayer, thou becamest a friend of God, and thou didst soar as on wings unto his love, and his divine beauty, which thou worthily now dost enjoy on high, with thy fellow athletes evermore enjoy, O most blessed and godly minded saint and man of prayer. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Righteous Father John, most glorious, since thou hast given thy mind wings to soar up to God, by faith thou didst hate the turbulence and impermanence of the world. For thou didst take up thy cross with ardent zeal to follow after him that beholdeth all, and thou didst subjugate the reluctant body to thy sovereign mind by ascetic labors through the Holy Spirit's might. Ni papa glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Come Receive our prayer, Allah, that sittest at the right. 
Dustin, Julie, Jennifer, Cody, and their family, Jerry, Robert, Jessica, and their family, Colleen, Jeremiah, Rebecca, and all those who have bowed their necks and grant them for the light yoke, make them honorable members of the Black Holy Church, make them worthy of the labor of regeneration, the forgiveness of sins and the robe of incorruption unto knowledge of thee, our true God. Let with us they may glorify thy honorable magnificent name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of the age. As we deserve the faithful again and again, peace let us pray unto the Lord.
receive our sojourn here to our own home, but according to the fullness of that mercy. Look upon us, O Lord, and hold this our worship. Even as thou didst receive at the hands of our holy apostles this true worship, so also do thou, my goodness, O Lord, receive from the hands of us sinners these gifts that have been accounted worthy to minister to thy holy altar. We may receive the reward of wise and faithful stewards in the fearful day of thy just requiting. Through the compassions of thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy own holy and good life, the good spirit thou and ever and unto ages of ages. Continually crying out to one another with unceasing praises, 
showers, temperate and healthful seasons. Give gentle showers upon the earth unto fruitfulness. Bless the crown of the year of our goodness. Make the schisms of the churches to cease. Quench the ragings of hostile nations. Speedily destroy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uprisings and heresies. Receive us all into thy kingdom. Show us to be children of the light and children of the day. And grant unto us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for all things that thou be done to us. And grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise thy Lord in the magnificent name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now and ever to the ages of Asia. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again, peace let us pray to you. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts which have been sent forth and sanctified, let us pray to you. Lord have mercy. That our God and loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy, most heavenly and ideal altar, as a savor of spiritual sweetness, will send out upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to you. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O oh Lord. And angel peace and faithful, by and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O oh Lord. Guardian and forgiveness of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O oh Lord. All things that are profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask the Lord.
I believe the Lord and I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who didst come into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And I believe that this is truly thy own immaculate body, and that this is truly thy own precious blood. Wherefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary or involuntary, of word or of deed, of knowledge and of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy immaculate mysteries unto the remission of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to thine enemies, neither will I give thee a kiss as to Judas. But like the people, I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation, be my partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but unto the healing of my soul and body.
which thou hast given unto us for the welfare and sanctification of our souls and bodies, do thou the same master of all, grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ may be for us unto faith and shame, unto love and faith, unto increase of wisdom, unto healing of soul and body, unto the turning aside of every adversary, unto the fulfillment of thy commandments, and unto an acceptable defense of the fearful judgment and seat of thy Christ. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now in heaven, and to the ages of ancient. O Lord, our God, powerful and strong, who has the power of life and death, and who saves both man and beast, who quickly, hearing all the faithful calling upon thee, also mercifully fulfill their petitions. We, thine unworthy servants, falling down with faith, with humble and contrite hearts, pray thee and implore thee, look down mercifully upon all of us, all of mankind, seized by grave infirmities and grievous sickness, and by the power of thy blessing, quickly heal them, and appeasing the sickness, transform the malignant air, afflicting them into healthy air, and drive away every evil that is brought upon them, whether from all demonic activity, from witchcraft, from enchantment, or from some other evil craft or diabolical violence. And grant us life and healing unto health, for the sake also of thy poor faithful people, through who through us are crying out to thee, and who have entreated mercy from thy goodness. Through the prayers of our most pure lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, by the power of the honorable and light giving cross, by the protection of the honorable by those powers of heaven, at the intercessions of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John of the Holy Glorious, all honorable apostles of the Holy Glorious, my victorious martyrs, of the Holy Adversary Physicians, Cosmas and Damien, Cyrus and John, Pantaleon and Hermoleus, the Holy Evangelist, Luke, Saint Luke the Physician, Saint Pio and all in suffering, Saint Nicephorus the Leper, and all thy saints, for thou art the fountain of life and the giver of life. Who savest all mankind, and unto thee do we send the glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father. May he who is risen from the dead Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the power and protection of the life giving cross for the prayers of the Holy Glorious and all our old apostles of our holy and God bearing fathers, of St. Basil, the great Archbishop of Caesarea Cappadocia, whose liturgy we have just celebrated, of the venerable and right victorious martyrs, 
of St. John the Baptist, the holy prophet and forerunner of our Lord, the Venerable Mary Magdalene, equal to the apostles and all the holy prayer bearers, patron and protectors of this holy temple, of the Venerable John of the Latter, whose memory we keep this day, together with the Venerable Mark, Bishop of Arathusa, the martyr Cyril, the deacon of Iliopolis, the martyrs Jonah and Barachisios, Estathios, the confessor, Bishop of Bithynia, whose memory we also keep this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, your human and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good in loves mankind, through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. So today we are on the um, fourth Sunday of the Great Fast. This is the day that we dedicate to St. John of the Ladder, St. John Climacus, who, if you've ever visited the Holy Land, and you go to the monastery of St. Sabas in the Judean desert, you can go to the place, you can find the cave, the little hole basically, Way up high, you have to go up uh, stairs, almost like a ladder, and then climb down into the cave where St. John dwelt. He actually lived there. So, it's a very good day to reflect on the fact that all of us are on our, in our little cells, in our little caves. I said last week that, um, look, we have the life of the church, the holy mysteries of the church. And now we can't have the Holy Mysteries, right? We can't participate in the Holy Mysteries right now. But we have the whole other side, the whole other side of the spiritual life of the church. And this side is the ascetic life. And I think we should talk about that a little bit more and maybe teach a little bit more about this. Week by week and, and actually year by year. Because... It seems that many people, especially in the West, you know, in the United States and Canada, we take Holy Communion for granted. Do you see? Like, we've only been away from the Holy Mysteries one or two weeks, and already we're like starving for it. But all these times that we've been receiving it, every Sunday, sometimes every Saturday and Sunday, sometimes every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, were we prepared? Did we have any ascetic effort? Did we make an offering to Christ? The life of someone like St. John Climacus, St. John of the Ladder, should reveal to us, and especially in the work here, I have here his 30 steps, you know, the ladder of divine ascent. It should reveal to us that, my goodness, the first step, I am still working on the first step. The second step, maybe sometimes, all the way through to the 30th step. Have we achieved anything regarding these 30 steps? Do we even know these 30 steps? Do we even want to know these 30 steps? Because if we don't know these, if we don't practice these, the holy mysteries, I dare say, are just like superstition. The holy mysteries are like some kind of a magical thing that I do every Every time they're offered, I say, oh, they must be for me, even though I'm not ready. They must be for me, because why would they be offered if not for me? And yet, the prayer life, the fasting life, and most especially, and I think there's definitely not enough spoken about regarding this one, the, the life of virtue, the virtuous life. Even you could pray and fast, you know, till you're, till you're dead, you know, till you're like falling over. But unless you practice the spiritual life, practice these virtues that St. John not only spoke about and taught about, he taught, out, he taught them out of the abundance of his experience. 
He taught them out of the abundance of his ruthless struggle on himself. And you would never hear him say, St. John of the Ladder, I should go to Holy Communion because I deserve to, or because it's offered, just because it's offered at this liturgy or that liturgy. He would say the opposite. And do you know how we know that? In this parish, Holy Murbears in Bonners Ferry, Idaho, we've been reading two steps every year. One on this Sunday, the Sunday of um, St. John of the Ladder, and then one next Sunday, St. Mary of Egypt. And do you know what the step that we've come to uh, this week or this year? Step number 25. And you'll never believe what it is. It's like, it should be our favorite. Step 25. On humility. On humility. Now just imagine that. How we've come to this place in the world where who knows what's going on out there these days. And especially with this plague that's come upon us. And you see the tendencies of people. Just their little tendencies. You know, things that they would go to confession about. Maybe be able to uh, talk through them. And then the priest could calm them down. Soothe them with the oil of the, of the grace of holy confession. And wipe them out. Before they become too big. But now we see like when there's some problem, some societal problem, some problem affecting the whole church, some problem affecting all mankind, you could say, right? We see all these little tendencies come up to the surface. Those who struggle with anger, very angry. Those who struggle with fear, very afraid. Those who struggle with, uh, let's say, lack of love or selfishness or whatever, wow, these days, like, all for me, hoarding to myself. So you see, whatever the particular passion, the particular struggle, right, they, they tend to come to the surface. And what do the fathers say? What, do, what does St. John, what do they all say about struggling with any of these passions? Especially when the enemy would like us to be sidetracked. He wants us to somehow look at these things. And emphasize them. And then we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in our sin, in our passion. Because, look, if you're focusing on sin or focusing on a problem, and if you're like every day in front of the TV watching the news, you know, you have to keep up maybe and look at what's happening. But not 24-7. You, you don't want to miss anything. There'll be enough misery for you to know about, I promise. But if we're focused on that, looking, 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 attention, attention, guess what? Our focus is now off of Christ. Do you see? The beautiful thing about the Orthodox faith is we have a million ways, not just the liturgy, although that's very important, it's central, but it's like the fruit, the crown, not just Holy Communion, that's the fruit, that's the crown of a life well lived, ascetically. A life well lived, offering it to Christ. Doing some reading and, and learning what I need to be doing from the doctors of the church, the spiritual fathers of the church. Especially ones like this, St. John. So then, when I come back to the Holy Mysteries, I will have worked on my salvation. I will have begged the Lord through repentance, through confession. A little side note. Now these days, even though we're not going to the Holy Mysteries, our Metropolitan has given us the blessing to hear confessions and to have confession. Do you think that the grace of Holy Confession is any less a grace or a mystery or a energy of God? or a way to unite with God than the mystery of Holy Communion? No. In fact, it is the neglected sacrament. It is the neglected one. So now that we have the opportunity to do that, I would think that people would come to confession now. They would call, make an appointment, we can have a confession. And then the last thing that happens anytime you have Holy Confession is you kneel down and the priest puts the stole over your head 
and pronounces that prayer of absolution. Do you know what that means? The prayer of absolution means all of these sins are now consigned to oblivion. If there's real repentance. Real repentance means I've been working on thinking about my inner life. And when I see something ugly or dark or passion filled, passion driven, comes to the surface and I can confess it. I can like regurgitate it out, throw it out because that's, that's what it deserves. Then the laying on of hands, the healing. That's a powerful mystery. You receive the grace of God through that mystery. So, if we're going through a few Sundays now without the holy mystery of the body and blood of Christ, may it be restored to us as quickly as possible. We can still have the grace of confession, repentance, before the end. You know, some, one thing that, one thing that uh, uh, a crisis, you know, a judgment, a temptation like this that comes upon us, when we have a crisis like this, you see now many people, if they can turn away from all the details, the practical details and what's going on and how terrible, if they can turn inward, you see, to the life of repentance. Because let's face it, we're supposed to be all living the life of repentance. And that every event, every significant thing that happens, and maybe everything is significant, right? But especially a big one like this, Everything that happens to us should cause us to go inside and reflect. Not on what others are doing and judging and looking outside of ourselves, but now this means something for me. What does this mean for me? And the more I go in, the more I discern that, the more I struggle with it, the more I face my ugliness and the more I can confess, the more grace I can receive from God. That requires... Step 25, humility. I encourage you this week to read St. John of the Ladder. Get your hands on some version of it. On humility. Step 25. He's very, very powerful when it comes to talking about what's required to even consider myself an Orthodox Christian. It's not automatic. You know, we prepare a long time when someone wants to come into the church and become baptized. We prepare a long time for that. And there's a reason, not just to read a book and to learn something in your head. The church teaches this, the church teaches that. We believe this, we believe that. That's one component, and it's an important component. But it's not the only component. The other two components, one is the worship life, the prayer life. Am I even once a day saying, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me? Some offering. Some little prayerful offering. And the third, the one I'm talking about here today, is the way I live my life. You know, am I living virtuously? So to go back to that idea of all my passions and all my struggles, the only way to counteract them, humility. Because humility will make us look at what's necessary to overcome that particular passion. In humility, I can see that if I'm an angry person, I look to the opposite extreme, to the opposite virtue. If I'm a lazy person, I look to the opposite virtue. And you know, to practice any of the virtues means these are gifts from God, and it takes me humility to absorb them, to take them to myself, so to speak. So, if I'm humble enough to say, Lord, I've been, I've been uh, and lustful, I've been practicing lustful thoughts even, to be humble enough not to keep looking at my sin only, right? That's me, I can't help it, that's who I am, I keep falling. Or, if I drink too much and get drunk, that's just who I am, I, I have a disease, you know, no. But to turn in humility to Christ, who will show us the opposite virtue. If I'm afraid, I have to be humble enough to look to Christ who will show us courage. He'll show us what it means for me to be courageous. If I have a hard heart and I'm struggling like so much with um, judgment these days especially, 
And I'm not going to tell you all the stories that I can tell you about people these days and what they're struggling with. But a lot of times it has to do with judging. Judging. As if I'm going to judge the world. <laughs> you know, God, let God do that. Our job is to pray for the world. Our job is to tearfully bow before Christ who loves the world. You know, He loves all the people in the world. He doesn't love what we're doing and what we've made the world. But every soul is precious to our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can take us, if we're cooperating in humility, to take us from this point over to the point where now, if everybody's looking inside and trying to figure out what this means, you see? Now you see the difference, what will happen? There would be way more cooperation. There should be so much love, so much care given, not only to the to the brethren from our own parish, to the brethren from our own parishes, right, within the Orthodox world, but to others outside, the neighbors, you know, they are all in our parish, so to speak. All the people who live, like for instance, in this county or in these surrounding counties, they're all our people somehow. Why? Because they're all God's people. But I, I have to be humble to see that. I have to be able to humble myself before them, right? We want them, when we return to receive the Holy Mysteries again, we want them to come and see that. We want them to eventually come and experience that. When we start partaking again of the precious body and blood of Christ, we want them to join us after, you know, preparation, after they learn what it means to ascetically offer my life to Christ. We believe this. We believe that God is very large, He's very big. And sometimes our categories, our understandings, our opinions, even our thoughts, you know, they deceive us. Not sometimes, all the times they deceive us. Every single day they're, they're pulling us here and there and we get stuck in our heads and we lose the grace of God because... No humility. I forgot what it means to humble myself before God even once a day to try to figure out what this whole cosmic scheme of things that's happening means in my heart. At the end of your life, and at the end of my life, we're going to forget about all the rest of it. We're going to forget about diseases, sickness, sorrow, sighing, we're going to forget about the job we lost and the uh, uh, unemployment that we're getting. We're even going to forget about those earthly relationships that were so important to us, right? The last thing we're going to be thinking about, hopefully, is what everything means now that I have five more minutes left in this life. What does it all mean? What have I done? What has all of that activity meant that's brought me to this moment? If I'm humble, or if I'm trying to struggle by practicing humility, I will see some insight there. And I don't know that. You don't know that. We don't know what the last minute of our life will be like, except if we practice it now, in humility. The notorious, diabolical, horrible thing about this disease is that we find out, since it's so contagious, people are suffering alone. They're very much by themselves. People are dying alone, very much by themselves. In all my years of priesthood, in all my years of pastoral uh, ministry, the, the most beautiful moments weren't those necessarily where people were... Um, miraculously healed, although we've seen that, where people were miraculously brought back to the church, we've seen that, and we've seen a million beautiful things. But the most beautiful time in a person's life, spiritually speaking, is those last few days, or those last few minutes of their life on earth. Because what's important? The family comes, the spiritual family, the parish comes, the priest comes, and ministers to that person, you know, in many different ways. I remember one 
gentleman who was, who was on his deathbed. And all he wanted for um, several people to come by every day and continue a cycle of reading. He wanted, he loved St. Nikolai of Zizhia, St. Nikolai Velimirovich. He wanted to hear like um, his teachings, prayers by the lake and all of those beautiful poems, stories, teachings. And that was way, way better than any kind of small talk about his symptoms. His symptoms were that he was dying. He was in a hospice house and he was dying. And there's no more discussion of symptoms. It's almost a blessing when we know, okay, there's nothing else the doctors can do. Get them out of the way. Now this one though, this particular disease is not exactly like that. Those ministries have to be done from afar. Those prayers have to be done, you know, noetically from church, from your house, not side by side, not holding hands, not looking into the eyes of the person and telling them how much you love them. I'll see you on the next life. This disease is that diabolical. It's that demonic. So, what does humility then require of us? It requires, because nobody knows what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes, or in the next 10 days, or in the next 10 years. We don't know if we're going to have a deathbed, or if our loved ones or the people we care about, or the people that are in our lives are going to have a deathbed where they can have this beautiful working out of their final days unto the salvation of their souls and unto the glory of God. So, do it now. Okay? Do it now. And there's a number, number of steps, number of levels. Number one, you tell the people in your family, the people... Not just the people that you're holed up with in the house. That's not just your family. You know, you have family everywhere. So you tell them that you love them and you're praying for them and that you care for them so much that you're putting their name in front of the throne of God. And you're, you're praying in front of the icon of Christ for them because you don't know if that's the last thing you'll ever say to them. So when you're talking to people, tell them something edifying, something holy. I'm giving you the gift of prayer. Please pray for me as well. We love each other. Maybe we won't see each other again in this life. Let's pray for each other here so that we can be together there. Let's, let's be together like in unity and in love in Christ here so that we can be together there. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to your hospital bed. The same goes true for confession. I need to, to confess my sins here and now before I'm alone. I have several people, you know, like in a hospital or in a nursing home or somewhere where there's no access. I can't access them even as a priest. What do you think about that? What do you do with that? I can only pray for them from afar. Do you see? Everything's been withdrawn from them now that there's a shutdown. Not only the Holy Mysteries, but any kind of like touch, any kind of prayer, person to person, even the laying on of hands and the stole of holy confession over their head, impossible. So let's do those things now. I love you. I care for you. I give my last breath for you by praying to Christ for you. I go to confession and I get rid of all the all the darkness, all the things that are taking me away from these light-filled moments, these light-filled days. You know, it doesn't have to be darkness all around us. We, the world practices that. We practice light. If I'm humble and don't care so much about myself, I can, I can have a joyful word for someone. I could just say, I'm praying for you, and I would love to see you in the kingdom of heaven. In fact, I would love for you to be in the kingdom of heaven. And if I get there, it's inconsequential. That was the prayer of St. Seraphim of Salaf. As long as all my spiritual children can be in the kingdom of God, humble Seraphim can stay away. He can stay outside. Do you have prayer like that? Do you have peace like that? Do you have joy like that? Let's begin today by practicing humility, leading to confession, leading to this life of repentance, which means that every person that we encounter on the telephone, 
on the computer, which is becoming a bigger, bigger part of our life, it seems, you know, or in person. Whichever way that somehow you're, you're finding your relationships with people, let's make them holy encounters. Humility will enable that to happen. Not just earthly, 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 laughing and joking. I mean, you, you don't have to be, uh, what's the word? Grim, grim. But we have to be like um, serious, with a smile, with joy, but with seriousness, okay? These are the days. Christ is showing us something about being serious, being humble enough to see what that means for me. I might not have another day in my life. I might not have another year to live my life, okay? So I have a lot of work to do, to pray for the whole world, to love everybody, to care for them, and to live the life of repentance based on my life of humility. If you have that mindset going into this week and beyond this week, if you have that mindset completing Great Lent, then your Pascha, no matter what it looks like externally, your Pascha will have joy. You will have like a light heartedness. And it doesn't matter whether you're with 500 people or two people. That's when we can truly say, like St. John of the Ladder from his cave, like the prisoners in the Russian and Romanian prison camps who lived underground for how many years in prison, whether alone in the darkness or out in the light, we can truly proclaim ultimately, because I'm living the life of repentance, Christ is risen. And it means something. Christ is risen is not just a slogan then. Just like Holy Communion, I think we take for granted Pascha, the resurrection of Christ. I pray that this ordeal can teach us what it means to receive the body and blood of Christ. What it means to celebrate the holy resurrection of Christ. Amen.